Recently, I was sourcing some small parts for another project on AliExpress, and I'm sure that part doesn't surprise you at all. But when I went to check out, I found I was just one pound shy of the free delivery threshold. So I had a choice. I could pay $1.99 delivery fee, or I could add just one more soldering kit to that basket. I think you can see the option I chose. So for the princely sum of £1.61, I purchased this small aeroplane CD4017 soldering kit. That meant overall the total cost of my order actually went down. So even if this turns out to be e-waste, at least it was e-waste that saved me money. But it still looks like a really fun little soldering kit, so let's take a look inside and see what we got. So these certainly look like some fun little PCBs. It looks like they slot together like so, but I think before we do that, we're going to need to solder all of the components on. Well, we have some battery clips, a switch, an NE555 timer, a CD4017 that has certainly seen better days. I'll have to straighten those legs out before that can go in. A few resistors, two yellow LEDs, two green LEDs, three red LEDs, and a couple of capacitors, one ceramic and one electrolytic. As you saw, I also have a little instruction leaflet which does identify the circuit and the components that we should have installed. And you can see we have the NE555 listed and the CD4017 just here. So as usual, I think I'm going to start with the resistors and we can have a little look here and see where they might go. On the PCB, they are just marked with an R number. So that here we have R3, for example. R2 is here and R1. So we'll need to compare that with the bill of materials to make sure we get them all in the right places. Now, irritatingly, they aren't marked with the R numbers on here to help us identify the three resistors. We have a 1K, a 5.1K, and a 10K. However, if we look very closely at this schematic diagram, we can just about make out that R1 is a 10K, R2 is marked maybe 5.2, certainly not 5.1, but R3 does appear to be a 1K. So what I'm going to do is put the 10K in R1, and R3 will be the 1K, and then we will put the remaining resistor in this slot here for R2. So this is brown, black, black, brown, so that should be a 1K resistor. This is brown, black, black, red, so that should be a 10K resistor. And this appears to be a 5.1K resistor. So again, our 10K here is going in R1. Time to turn on the soldering iron. Our 1K in R3. and our remaining resistor, the 5.1 in R2. Now let's put in our ceramic capacitor here in C2. There are only two capacitors and C1 here is clearly the round electrolytic outline. This has the ceramic capacitor outline here. So Let's put the ceramic in C2. The legs on the sockets aren't too bad, so it's a shame that this chip has got quite so smushed. Okay, we'll do the switch first. We should probably do these button cell covers as well. Now it's important that we're able to actually slide the button cells in, so make sure the tabs are facing in a reasonable direction, and it's actually indicated on the PCB here that the tabs should be towards the centre of the aircraft. So it seems I've been given surface mount style, and we actually have sockets here to put them in, so I think what I might do is bend the tabs on these down so they can go through the holes, I think that would be a better connection.
So you can see there was quite a lot of fiddling on this one, and I was just trying to make sure that there was no shorting to this resistor lead here. They are exceptionally close, and I don't think they're supposed to connect, so just to be sure, I've gone ahead and sort of reshaped the rear terminal on this, or the stopper position on the battery clip, so hopefully that won't short out. Finally, I think it's time to install those sockets I mentioned. Next, let's do our capacitor. And the positive is on the longer lead, and the negative is on the shorter lead. It also has a negative symbol on the can here. The square pin represents the positive side, and the hashed area represents the negative side. Of course, we can check that with a multimeter. Popping this into continuity, and we can check that the negative side of the battery is going to the negative area on the capacitor layout. So the negative area of the battery is the solder pad on the PCB itself, and it's connected to the negative side of all of the LEDs. So we can use that as one connection point, and we can check which one on the capacitor is negative. No connection, and we have a connection. So now we just have our LEDs. So I'm gonna start off with these green ones. And again, the longer lead indicates the positive, and the LEDs are actually marked, so that's a bonus. You can see that we actually have one LED left over, and that's because it sits on the PCB here. So you can see there's a negative lead for the LED and a positive lead for the LED. So this one needs to sit straddled across, like so. This provides the tail light for the aircraft. So this time I'm gonna to need to cut those leads in advance, so we can cut them down to a short length. And I don't know if you saw, but one of those leads just went flying around the room. Of course, we now don't know which one is positive and which one is negative. Fortunately, we can see there is a very slight flat side on the LED here, and that indicates the negative. And also there is an anvil inside, which is usually on the negative side. So there we go, we have the anvil on the negative side and the flattened edge there. Now, of course, if there's an LED on here, power needs to get from the other board here, where the batteries are, to this board here. And of course, there are some connection points here, so those ones definitely need soldering. We can slot our plane body together, but we definitely need to solder those connections there. And actually, there's some additional connections we can solder for strength. So I think alignment of the two halves of the plane could be slightly better. Um, the PCB only slides back so far, but I think the connections should be fine for now. Of course, we now need to install our chips. The 555 is just here. But as we've already seen, our CD4017 is looking a little bit mangled. So first up, I'm going to straighten out all these pins. So certainly not perfect, but hopefully this will go in the socket.
OK, both the chips are now seated. So now we have to install the batteries. And I mentioned that this was added to my basket to save money. And it certainly did that on the AliExpress purchase. Unfortunately, as you can see, these are rather unusual batteries. So I've had to go ahead and buy some specifically for this product. Here are those batteries. These are CR1220 and they are just off eBay actually. And so these ones I think were £2.29. So overall, this whole thing actually did cost me money after all. Nevertheless, I have five of them, so let's see if we can fit two. Hopefully we can slide these past the LEDs, but that doesn't look like it's actually going to work. So I've just checked the diagram and it turns out I was supposed to fold the LEDs forward. Too late now, we'll just have to desolder them and put them back after I've slipped the batteries in. So that's one in, now let's do the other side. Okay, that's the second side done. Let's see how it looks when you turn it on. And there we go, all of the LEDs are flashing in a nice little sequence. That's pretty neat. I should probably solder the rest of these connections here to make sure I can keep this body of the plane nice and solid. So I think this is a really neat little soldering project, and I'm certainly glad I added it to my basket, even if I did have to buy some batteries to make it fully operational. But I do think there might be some problems with refueling it in future. Nonetheless, I really do recommend this, so I'm glad I had a chance to play with it. But for now, I hope you found this video interesting, and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next one.